Hi guys, so we were supposed to be training our school governing body members so that they can be upskilled, empowered and informed and be the most competent governors they could possibly be so that your school can benefit. That is the area we're going to look at today. So, once again, for those of you who don't know, I'm Sharon and this is the School Corridor channel where we are currently doing the SGB training series. So, let's jump straight into that when I pull up my other slide and you'll see the, that uh, the South African School Act Section 19 speaks about building the capacity of the SGBs, right? So we first have to just look at why we need to capacitate our school governors. Why do school governors need training? And I've listed a few points there because we know that our school governors, especially our parents, need as much knowledge and experience so that they can perform their jobs competently, right? So we must ensure that they get those competencies, they must receive the knowledge, the skills, and they must be given practical experience so that they can be the highly functioning governors that we expect them to be. Then, of course, we know that when, as soon as we have more knowledge, as soon as we gain more experience, then our confidence levels also increase and often we are able to make better decisions. Now, that is the very same reasons why we need to equip our school governors to be able to make those decisions that will affect the entire school, right? So we share information because we want to inform and empower, as I said at the beginning. And then, of course, the training needs of your school governing body will be determined by the functions or the roles and responsibilities that your school governors must perform. So let's move on to the next section. Um, and there you can see I'm just speaking about training. So we need to look at the frequency of the training because we must get this out of our heads that, you know, we can give people once of training and then automatically we will remember all the information and we'll be able to apply that information. Training is um, needs to be ongoing. Training needs to be cumulative, right? It needs to be done at, on a regular basis because the more training we receive, the more um, knowledge we'll have, and then we can put that knowledge into practice. And then if we identify any gaps, then we'll be able to request more training. So we can't just have this once of workshop, give all the information as if that will help. And then when people are not able to act in a particular situation, then we want to criticize and we want to say that people are incompetent and they don't have the skills. But when we look back, then we'll see that we didn't really help people gain that knowledge and gain that um, practical experience. Okay, so the training must be ongoing and it must be rigorous training. It must be comprehensive training and not, like I said, just um, a flash in the pan. Then, of course, it's very important when you do the training that the training must be needs-based. In other words, you can do the general training because the functions or the roles and responsibilities of your school governing bodies will help you to shape your training, but you also have to look at the needs of that particular school or schools so that when you do the training, the training is targeted, the training is focused, and people benefit, benefit from the training in a, they maximize their learning in other words, right? Then, of course, we also have to look at the formats that we are using. Are they user-friendly? Is the language accessible? Is it in the language that the community speak? You know, or are we forcing um, them to learn very difficult concepts and very learn very difficult skills in a language that they don't understand? So those are the things we need to consider. And then, of course, you need to remember that you have parents on the governing body and the parents, um, the material must be presented in a way that is accessible to the parents as well. And so we can't use jargon and just use the formats that professionals use all the time, right? If you go onto the internet, you will find many training manuals and they are brilliant training manuals. You'll find so much information there, 
But we have to acknowledge that the language that is used is often jargonized, it's difficult language, it's not easily accessible by our parents and even our educators, right? And people, when they read it, they don't always want to read these documents that look like legal documents. So we need to look at the formats in which we're presenting the information and we need to find out by the parents if they understand and if they need additional information. Okay, and then we also have to look at the training models that we use. And I know it's a common practice where we train a few people on the governing body and then there's the expectation that those people who were trained must go back and train the others. Now, cascade training is, it sounds easier than in practice, right? Because it means you expecting um, to use the train the trainer method or uh, model and so ever sitting in the training will need the competencies to be able to facilitate that kind of training. The person needs to understand the information very clearly to be able to convey that information and often that's a tall order because we can see that even in professional settings. If you send one person to a workshop and you ask that person to uh, replicate that workshop in his or her own setting, then the person normally balks because that person was just listening to understand the information himself or herself. And so now you give that person additional um, pressure by saying, go back and go help other people, right? So we must try to ensure that the majority of the school governing body members are in the same training session so that whatever they learn there, they heard it firsthand, and then you can use a follow-up training style where you will then just help to ensure that that information actually sticks. But I think the cascade model is a very complex model to use, especially when we're talking about our school governors. So we need to look at um, the formats that we use and the expectations that we have, especially when we're not training the entire SGPs of schools. Right, then I want to move on to who is actually responsible to ensure that the training happens. Now, the first point is that the state is responsible to fund the training as stipulated in the South African Schools Act. So that funding must be made available by your provincial education department. Then the provincial education department can then um, find training organizations or training institutions to help with the training, okay? But the education department must also facilitate that training themselves via the HO or head office and via the district office officials. So, in most cases, your education department will do the introductory training of the school governing bodies, and that training will be um, convened by your head office or by your district offices, and the funding that is used for that training will come from that funding that the education department is provided to um they are given that money by the state and of course they then have to allocate that money for the training of your school governing bodies. Okay, um, but very importantly I think the training must be continuous. So you will have the introductory training and I think currently many of the SGPs are attending some form of introductory training, but priority is that the training must be continuous. That introductory training is not enough, so um, you need to see how can you ask for assistance from your district officers and from the head office of your education department to help you with further training, right? Um, in terms of the district officials, there is a particular component that is to the school governing body um, matters, including the training. So you can approach your district office if you require additional training in whichever governance area you need that training. Okay? Then, of course, um, 
you need to check as a school governing body, is there a training calendar? And this will help you to ensure that the, the training that you're currently receiving is not a once-off training session, but is there a training program that your school governing bodies will be able to follow for the rest of the year and or for the three-year um, period for where they're going to act as the school governing body, right? So you must just ensure that you do have access to that calendar, that you do know what training is available. And then, of course, also the models of the training. That is also very important. Are those training sessions, face um, training sessions, in-person training sessions? And I know it's very difficult. Now, in fact, now that we're on level four, the in-person training will probably not even be a reality. So um, we have to make use of other forms of training. And there are possibilities out there, right? There are digital formats that can be used. Um, there are so many conference, virtual conference facilities, like your Microsoft Teams that provide you with a presentation format. And um, you have Zoom out there, you have Google out there. So all those platforms can be used for the training. And then, of course, we also have other social media platforms like Facebook, like WhatsApp, like TikTok too. <laughs> if you are with it, if you are that informed about all the social media platforms that you have. So are uh, training um, authorities taking advantage of those platforms? Because you can have the occasional conference, training conference, but if you want to speak to continuous training, then it's a very good idea to explore those options of um, using social media like Facebook and YouTube and even use a platform like WhatsApp, right? And Facebook, for example, allows you to set up forums. So are there such SGB forums on the... Um, on Facebook, for example. Now, I'm not aware of any because I haven't received any invitations. Um, and usually these invitations will come because they watch what you're interested in. And so uh, Facebook will make recommendations. So yes, I get recommendations of schools that I can follow. I get recommendations of other um, groupings where I am invited, but I haven't seen an, a school governing body forum uh, where I can be, you know, where I can join and then, of course, also participate. So that is something that I think the education department needs to explore because there are many sections of the education department where there are Facebook, plat um, Facebook pages and, of course, the Department of Education, the National Education Department, has a very active Facebook page in terms of giving information, so nothing stops the education department from starting a an SGB forum, okay? And then, of course, what about exploiting um, the radio? Why can't we, knowing that it's of national importance that we um, capacitate our school governors, why are we not exploring having radio broadcasts? Right, where people can actually, most of our South Africans have a radio. And so there could be a program that is designed around the training of SGBs. And then, of course, what about TV broadcasts? Why can't we use our national TV also to have a program running for SGBs where SGBs are trained? Um, we're doing a very good job now in terms of the COVID um, advocacy and sharing the COVID uh, pandemic information. And I think we need to be a bit more creative now. We need to think out of the box and not only focus when there's a crisis, and in this case a health crisis, but also if the SGB is, is a legal structure and that is the structure that we where we know our parents can have a voice and be empowered, then we need to look at how we structure the rest of our organizations, right? And even our government work. We need to we need to look at what can we use out there to reach our parents. And um, there are so many people who are creative who can assist with this. We just need to have the political will to do things like this, right? And to know why we need to upskill our parents. Because... 
when you upskill parents and in this case your parent governors, then those parents will be picking up skills which they can use to perhaps apply for jobs, they can use it in their own lives, their minds will be stretched. So you're also helping the person to develop personally. And so we need to begin to think about our social responsibility. And uh, the SGB is a good place to start, right? So we just need people to start advocating more for how do we make it possible and stop criticizing school governing bodies, especially our parent component and speaking about the illiteracy and the inability to handle all these complex issues. If we know that there is, um, you know, though if we know that that there are limitations and that there are problems and and so forth, we must find creative ways to help um, people break down those barriers. And once people are informed, once once people are knowledgeable about issues, then you will find that the participation will also increase and people will stop feeling that they are going to feel small and undermined because they don't have the information. Right? So, yes, that was a long rant about how we need to be creative and how we need to think differently about how we're organizing our lives in society. Right? We can't use these old models anymore. We um, we just do the linear thing, SGPs were now elected and now we must do the introductory training and then we think of another training perhaps later in the year. No, we need to start being proactive. We need to start thinking in terms of being transformational. We need to think, we need to start thinking in terms of really um, feeding into the social justice um, agenda of the country. We need to think of upskilling people not only for a particular job but giving them life skills as well. Okay? Yes, that wasn't planned, guys. It just comes when I'm on here. <laughs> so, I've mentioned the models of training that we need to explore and so it's going to be very interesting to see, you know, how the um, district offices, for example, are going to make use of the different platforms out there, how SGBs are going to um, also try to get their own pages going and sharing information and just finding different avenues to help yourselves grow and, of course, to help your school community grow as well. Right, let's move on to the next section. And... I've mentioned that the state is responsible for the training of the SGP, so the state does make that funding available, and the state will roll out the initial introductory training via the um, education department's head offices or district offices. And I think I did mention that there are district officials um, who can assist. So there's an expectation that all district officials, when they're dealing with an issue, and they know it's also a governance issue, that they infuse that in the support that they give the schools and not just rely heavily on the one component at the district office to do the training, right? I'm just thinking of the top of my head. If um, somebody moves in there and um, you are the, say, for example, the people management coordinator and there is... Um, a request for support from your office and you can determine whether that is also a governance issue and then ensure that you also add any information that you think will be relevant and that will be important for the for the schools to know okay so we need to really just be um, aware of where can we plug in to help the schools grow in their governance areas as well. Okay, now, this slide speaks to the um, the SGB associate, associations that can also assist with the training and that the education department can also um, request, you know, via the official processes and um, so forth to do the training. So those training authorities that specialize in school governing body training and your school governing body associations can also be approached by the education department to assist with that training. Then, of course, the education department also contributes towards your membership if you belong to an SGB association, a legally recognized um, school governing body association, right? 
Now, I have checked on the internet and I see a few of these associations there. There could be ones that are not mentioned on the internet, but I think there is, um, there, there are only a few of these um, SGB associations and I think we need more. You know, I see there's a massive uh, federation, massive organization on there and I've been onto the YouTube channel and I've um, tried to check the, out their Facebook pages and um, just to see what has been offered to the members. So there's really not much information. Now, if I'd been a general governor, oh, not a general governor, if I'd been a school governor, a parent, and I've been a school governor, I know how to use the internet, I go into the internet and I look for information, then I can tell you guys that it's really um, a concern that there's such a little information concerning school governing bodies on the internet, right? You'll find a lot of research papers, and I think um, those uh, intellectuals, those academics who researched the uh, school governing body issues, I think it's very important because you sort of get the same message that everybody's saying. And I think we need to move past that now. We need to look for, you know, action-orientated ways of um, capacitating our school governing bodies. So I think there's a gap. And I think school governing bodies, associations, I think there's a gap in terms of that because if you are a school governing body association, you are legally recognized and so you can have representation when you have to meet, when you meet with the head of department. So all governing body associations that are recognized, legally recognized, have a voice and they can meet with the, with the um, head of department. And so if you have any issues, you can raise those issues at that level as an association. Now, if you only have about two, three, four associations in the entire country, then it means that um, only those associations and the members will have a voice at the higher levels. So it's something that schools must consider, right? Um, is there a need for more associations so that you have more representation at the levels where your voices can be heard? So I'm aware of various um, groups on Facebook, for example, where you have parents running these groups and doing a marvelous job. But just imagine that the parents were part of the school governing body structures and that you belong to associations and that you could, in fact, let those um, grievances or those concerns that you have or those suggestions that you have be taken up to the highest level. And I think they meet once a term. So at least um, you are guaranteed that your concerns or any issues that you want to raise will reach the highest level. And you... You can't, ex yeah, you can't make the assumption that people are going to look at what you are saying on Facebook, all right? So we need to look at all those legal possibilities where we can have a voice and we are, our concerns and our issues can be raised at the highest levels and that is where the school governing bodies, uh, body associations play a role, okay? Then um, SGPs, according to the Act, can also belong to voluntary associations, um, SGB associations. So my question is how many voluntary SGB associations are there in the country, in the province, um, in the different regions? How many are really there? Because that is also an opportunity for you to, um, you know, it's a platform where you can raise your issues, you guys can um, uh, train, have training sessions and you can have sharing sessions and you can have consultation sessions because the people um, or the school governing bodies that act in a particular area will probably have common needs and so you can discuss those common needs and come up with decisions and help yourselves as well. The only difference between the voluntary association and the recognized, legally recognized association is that the legally recognized one one will get a contribution in terms of your membership from the education department and secondly you will have um, representation when the school governing bodies meet with the HOD okay so your voluntary association won't have those privileges but that there is also a role for your voluntary SGB associations especially at the regional level at cluster level. So that is something that SGPs must consider. 
And there are so many unemployed people in the community, so many skilled and knowledgeable people that you can call on to help. Right, like I said previously, there are many people that want to volunteer their services, but there are no structures in place. And um, if you put structures like this in place, then if there is somebody in the community, whether that person is a professional, an artisan, or whoever, that person wants to join, it depends on your membership um, requirements, and then people can join and share their expertise, right? And of course, like I said, you can draw each other's um, strengths on each other's knowledge and on each other's um, skills in terms of governance issues. Then I want to get to the next slide and I'm getting stuck here actually. Okay, I think, um, yeah, then just on the recognized SGBA, the legal um, school governing body associations, if you belong to one, you must check, for example, what does your membership include? Now, remember, I did mention that the state will contribute towards your membership, but it's also your responsibility to find out what, what are your perks, what are, you know, what are your privileges, um, what do you get for being a member of the um, SGBA, um, do you have access to round-the-clock consultations, for example, do the organization or the association offer training and when is the training and where can you find the training and do you need to pay for the training? Those kinds of questions. Then, of course, are those associations making themselves visible on the digital media as well, on the social platforms? Can you find them on YouTube? Can you find them on uh, Facebook? Can you find them on WhatsApp? Are there forums? And I think I've raised this in the, in the, the first part of this discussion. And then I did mention to you that your SGBA will have representation and access to the head of department. Right, let's move on to the next slide. And then I think I did um, talk about the volunteer associations of SGBAs. Um, my question is, do you have such clusters in your area? And um, are you going to consider using people to volunteer? Who's going to help you set it up if you want it? And um, who are you going to call on? And then, of course, I did mention that the training can focus on your common needs. So next steps is really just, um, you know, I put out a lot there. I think I've just been rambling on and on. Um, but the important thing is that SGBs must be trained. The training must not be um, just the finite training where it's a once off and it's just because you are SGP members now, so now you need the training. No, we need to think long term. When we give the training, we are also instilling our community. And so even if, we, if the SGP members um, term is over, they can use that those skills to help um, others as well, right? And we're always going to have school governing bodies, so we need to start thinking out the box, like I said previously. We need to start thinking of their young parents, um, and we need to equip them before they come onto the school governing body, so we need to pay more attention to it. And so my question to you is, what are you going to do in terms of your training? Are you going to um, expect more from the education department in terms of training for your um, school governing bodies? And if you belong to an association, are you going to expect more training from the associations as well? And if you don't have a voluntary SGBA, uh, SGB associations in your area, then is that a possibility? Is that something you can think about so that you can help yourself in the long run. We need to have a long view as well, okay? There are too many other issues that are distracting us, um, too many other issues that are taking up our time, and so you can't expect the principal who must support the school governors in their functions, but you can't expect the principal to be doing the training, right? We need to look at the other agencies that can assist us with the training of our SGBs. So, that is the end of the session, guys, on the training of the SGPs. And if you found this video helpful, then let me know in the comment section. And then, of course, you can share it with whoever you like. And you may also give me advice on what you would like to 
um, and learn about or hear about in these SGB training sessions that I'm running. Okay, so I'm moving over to the functions of SGBs, and I think that may also be quite an interesting, exciting, um, you know, learning moment for our SGBs. So on that note, from Sharon Lewis, have an awesome day. It's raining out here. It's cold. But that is life, that is, we need the rain, we need this kind of weather, and to stay safe. Cheerio.